All right, yeah, we're rolling. All right, welcome back. We are back. Hopefully today, we're going to get some fire breathing out of this here drag bike. So, lift off, I was doing the brakes. I was trying to route brake lines, and uh, the brake line that come with the kit uh, was a little too long, and I couldn't hide everything really where I wanted to. So, and plus I needed some uh, breather tube for the crankcase breather to the catch can. So I went over to a local supply place that uh, I deal with guys all the time that make my hydraulic lines and fittings and all that good stuff. So I picked up some uh, tubing for uh, the breather and uh, I took the brake line with me and uh, I was like, man, this is my problem. And they're like, yeah. So we mic'd everything as far as all of the banjo fittings and the ends and all that good stuff. And uh, I kind of measured it out. Hopefully I measured it right. Uh, measured it out and they're uh, I was gonna see can y'all make me a shorter line or shorten this line and uh, They're like well, we better if we just make you a new one blah 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 I said well, that'd be great. So cuz actually I need to use this line on another bike. So show you what we got They made me brake line so got to use the same kind of banjo fittings that uh, Connects to the go power sports brake lever and brake caliper and they put a little snazzy little insert and check that out they had green. I was like, sweet. All right, so that's gonna be cool. So, hopefully uh, I'm gonna get this on. We're gonna take a break <laughs> and get the brakes on. So, I'm gonna get that on, which since uh, I taken the brake caliper and lever and all that stuff apart, you're gonna get air in your line. So, I'm gonna get everything put on the bike and I'll show you how to bleed brakes. Maybe you don't know how to bleed brakes or if your brakes are a little spongy or squishy. Maybe you might need to bleed the brakes so you can watch that part. And then we'll get on to the uh, bunch of wiring and stuff. So that's going to be a whole nother fun project we got to get done today. So, like I said, the goal today is to get this thing uh, fired up and see how it sounds. Of course, I don't know if I can ride it today because it's been pouring down rain. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I'm going to get the brakes on it. Get the brakes, brakes bled. And then we'll get onto the wiring and see if we can't get it buttoned up. So, y'all hang on, y'all. All right, I'm gonna see if I can try and help y'all out if you have to have uh, bleed your brakes on your bike. So I got my master cylinder mounted up here. I got the brake line. Kind of ran where I wanted. Uh, I didn't zip tie anything up because uh, I got other wires and cables and stuff. So, but I did get it kind of semi-routed. Got it all ran back here, and this is your brake 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 bleeder right here at the top. And normally it has a little uh, rubber cap, keeps mud and everything else out of it. I just took this off just so it's easier for me to get to. Then I, after I get done with everything, I'll make sure and put this back on so you don't get rust, dirt, <clears throat> excuse me, and everything inside of your bleeder right there. But I just put a line on it just to run down. Probably need to put it at a deal, but paper towel's fine. Just so I don't get brake fluid, because brake fluid can eat up your paint job, guys. So, right up here on the top of the, your hand cylinder, right here at the very top, you got the little sight glass. <clears throat> you pull the top plate off, which has got Two little, uh, let's see, is it going to zoom in? It's got two little Phillips screws. And on top of the cover right here, you make sure that you don't mess your seal and the little diaphragm thing. That should be collapsed down. I'll clean this when I put it back on. But on top of the cap, it'll either tell you use dot three or dot four brake fluid. So make sure, like it says, use dot three or dot four brake fluid. <clears throat> I'm going to try to explain. <clears throat> Excuse me, folks. <clears throat> Dang it. Uh, I put some paper towels around here and you don't want to squeeze your lever real tight. I don't know if this is going to zoom in or not, but you see the little uh, holes in the bottom of your reservoir right down there at the bottom. That's going to be basically where your mechanism goes in. Sight glass is over here in the corner. That's what you see from the back side to make sure that you can just look and make sure you have brake fluid. But as you're lightly pumping it, um, that's where it's going to be spitting fluid up for as far as your pressure and the little spring pocket is your return. So when you're lightly doing it, you can kind of see how it's spitting all that up. Now this took me a while to get pressure in it because I had to fill the whole brake line. So if you squeeze this real hard, it'll sit there and just 
bro blow brake fluid all over your bike but I'm just getting this pumped up pretty good like I said it took a while because you had to fill up the whole line I what I did is just kind of left the line off at the very back let it gravity feed but that's only if you're replacing the whole line like I did here really or taking your stuff completely apart so it kind of takes two hands or it takes two people if you're trying to film it for y'all which uh, it's just me today but what you're going to do is you're going to pump your lever on your handlebar right you're going to pump that get you some good pressure on it then you're going to hold it and with your other hand helicopters airplanes dang it yeah they'll fly over okay like i was saying pump your hand hand grip up and you're going to hold that and as you're holding it you will come back here to your bleeder screw you don't have to take this all the way out all you want to do is just crack your bleeder and I'm watching for brake fluid just to come out so it doesn't spray all over everything. And then you want to immediately tighten this back up before you let off that brake lever. Then you basically just keep doing the process till you can look through your tube, uh, if, you're, if you're running a tube, or you're making sure you're not getting any air bubbles coming out of your bleeder. If you're still getting a little air and little spurts and a little brake fluid and you see it bubbles in it, then you need to keep bleeding it. But the main thing you want to do is you want to watch your brake fluid level. Where are we at? There we go. If your brake fluid level gets down and air gets into one of those two pockets in the bottom, then you got to start all over because then you got air back in the system. So make sure and keep it up. But uh, this brake caliper or cylinder right here, you want to have it at that sight glass. So at least halfway. I will put it all the way to the top edge of that sight glass is where I'd put it. So make sure as you're bleeding it, you come back over here, check this, and make sure that your reservoir stays full. So basically it's all you gotta do. We're just gonna pump this up. We'll get air out of it, real light strokes. Then we'll take and actually hold the lever in. Then I'll reach back up my other hand, crack the bleeder screw, and repeat the process till you got a good, nice, firm brake lever. So I'm gonna get that, finish getting that bled, and then we're gonna go to the next thing we can get uh, mounted up on the bike. All right, we're kicking right along on the bike, but I wanna stop for just a small minute. I read some messages and guys asked me, they wanted to know uh, what cam I put in the motor. Well, I cannot take credit for this engine. Uh, I really don't wanna say where I got the engine or how, how I came about the engine. I can say that I won it. A very cool uh, guy that I met a couple years back at JMBR built this engine and uh, he raffled it off and I was uh, actually, the wife pulled me some lucky numbers and told her, to, I gave her that job because she's very good, always, that's my lucky charm. Anyway, she pulled me some lucky numbers, blah, 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 I won this engine. So therefore, I'm not taking credit on building this engine. That's just, that's just not me. But, and I really don't want to say the gentleman's name, but you know, if you're out there, this guy's out. He's a cool guy, built some crazy stuff. I'm not going to tell you where he lives, give you his phone number and all that good stuff, but I'll show you the motor. Kind of a little slow walk around. And that's as far as I'm going to get. Um, what cam is in it, uh, I'd have to go back and look. But are we really going to tell other racers what cams we put in our motors? Let's just say it's bigger than a 265. Let's leave it at that. But anyway, like I said, I'll spin you around. Let's take a look at this beast. Very cool motor. So, I'm hoping to get it uh, fired up today. But I just wanted to take time and uh, let y'all know that I, I am not taking credit for this engine build. I did paint the fan shroud. That's about it. But, that's where I'm going to leave that at, y'all. And uh, we're gonna get over here to the electronic part. Oh, let me grab my remote right quick before I forget where I lose it. There we go. All right, so anyway, like I said, cool guy. We're gonna see how this thing runs. But uh, man, it does look pretty sexy. It might not be fast, but boy, it's gonna look good sitting there. <laughs> anyway, next thing we're gonna install on the bike is this Alfano 6. Now, um, I am not good with electronics by any means, um, but this thing right here, this is all the stuff you'll get with your deal. You get tons of paperwork, manuals, instructions, uh, some other stuff that Alfano carries, uh, like air pressure gauge, you know, or, or uh, air 
air pressure gauge, uh, like an air thing to air up tires, all, all kinds of stuff. They give you tons of literature with it. This thing basically hooks up to the moon and stars. Um, it does crazy stuff. So I got to get the wife on it to make sure we get it set up correctly. I did manage to go through, I don't even remember which is the own button. That's probably not it. Which is the own button? I have to go back and look. Or did I not leave it on the charger? Oh, there it is. Oh, it's all flashy in the screen. That looks kind of goofy. Uh, I did manage to go through. I know it's all flicker and it is on my camera screen. So anyway, I managed to go through. My mom used to call me Slick Rick all the time. So I put my name as Slick and I was able to set the background screen to green. <laughs> uh, does that turn it off? I think that turns it off. That's really flickery. All right, well, we're going to just do this for a second to turn it off. But uh, anyway, this thing does tons of stuff. So let's say you wanted to pick you up one of these for the Go Power Sports 180 race. This would be awesome. It uh, does all kind of stuff. You can have different tracks that you can program into it. Uh, let's say if you wanted to go around the GPS track, hooks up to satellite links and all that. So it will show like lap times. Uh, you show your track layout. You can put multiple deals in it. Uh, it's got the USB charger that comes with it. Lots of cool stickers. Uh, and also, this will be one of the attachments that I'm fixing to put on the motor here. This goes around your spark plug, or actually your spark plug goes through it. This will hook up to the back. We do have an extension cable here that will tie into it. And then it comes over here, and they're all like color-coordinated for... Uh, whatever application you're plugging into. There's multiple ports if you want to plug in other items into the back. Thanks, so if I can spin this around. Right down here at the very bottom, I don't know if you can really see right there, you have a tax signal port, um, which I'll just put that, it's laying on the bike. So this will run through here so you'll get your tax signal through it. This is gonna be your temp. Um, all kind of crazy stuff you can do with the Alfano 6. So I still haven't had a chance to go through and get everything set up but for instance right here you can pick your screen displays uh like i said this thing is completely crazy of what you can do with it so this would be a really cool deal if you wanted something for like the gps 180 race i think it would be a a great upgrade to put on your bike so i'm going to get this thing mounted so it gives you some hardware and rubber grommets and all that stuff on the back i think it's still flashing uh, so what I was going to do to mount this on the handlebars is I got one of the Go Power Sports handlebar riser clamps, you know, one of these here that has your bolt and everything in it. Uh, I made me a aluminum bracket, and uh, of course I had to put a little fancy hardware on it. We're going to use the Allen bolts that came with it. We're going to get this mounted right up here in the very center of the bike. So basically the display will be sitting kind of like right here. I can just look right down at it. And I still got to get everything adjusted when I get it on the ground. But I want to get all this mounted so I can get all the wires and cables and everything. Try to get them all loomed up and with a throttle cable, brake line, brake line get all this uh, tied up. So I need to get the Alfano 6 mounted, get all the wires run for it, the tack, uh, the temperature deal for the spark plug and all that good stuff. And kind of get everything tidied up. And uh, then I think we can get the seat on it. I need to put oil, I need to go grab some fuel, and uh, we should be getting close to firing up. So, I'm gonna get this mounted up and I'll show you what it looks like when we got it on the bike. All right, I got this here. Ooh, almost fell. Got my Alfano 6 mounted up on the little bracket I made. Like I said, I just took uh, one of the uh, GPS handlebar riser clamps and uh, kind of flipped it inverted, I guess you'd say, and uh, made this aluminum bracket, a little fancy nut on the front, kind of hard to see it, it's kind of tucked back in there, but uh, anyway, cool way to mount it, I guess, I thought so, that way you can uh, loosen the two bolts and uh, pivot the whole mechanism down, once I get it on the ground, I'll get all the final stuff bolted up there, I'll see how I like that, so I got pretty much all the wiring, kill switch, all that good stuff done so now i'm gonna put the seat on it get the seat bolted down and then try and take this conglomeration of uh cables wires brake line all that good stuff and tuck it up underneath there where you don't see it 
So, uh, I've got the breather. Got it plumbed when I went the other day to get the brake line done. I'm gonna, I think I need to go back and put me some clamps on that. But got that plumbed. Got a valve in the bottom so I could drain it. Yep, so uh, we're getting close. Let me get this seat on. Get that, all this uh, stuff tucked up where it looks nice and clean. And uh, I think it'll almost be about time to get it on the ground and see if she'll light up. So, let's get to putting the seat on it. Where is that at? Right over here. Ooh, it's dark. Right there. Go Power Sports has two different seats. So I got bolts in there. Yes, I already pre-drilled the holes, all that good stuff. I'm gonna just sit this right. Let's see, we'll just sit it right yonder just for now so I don't drop it. But like I said, they have two different style seats. So like on the wife's bike, we put this thicker seat on it, a little bit more cushionier. And this one's a lot, you know, low profile and thin. So I went with the thinner seat, got the little kick up on the back. Yeah. So I'm gonna get to get to hiding some wires. We'll be right back. All right, there we go. We got all the wires, cables, brake line, all that good stuff uh, tucked up kind of underneath the frame. One thing cool about the, uh, the Rascal frame, they, uh, the brace that they put inside of the frame rails to bolt your seat and everything uh, to makes a good place to uh, run zip ties underneath and actually like pull the wire up towards the bottom of the seat pan. But uh, yeah, it's tucked up there pretty good. I still got uh, one cable left right there. We're gonna hook that up at a different time. So, where we're at now, um, I did fill up the engine. Um, let's see, what do we got? Yeah, we did fill the engine up. And of course, what are we running in a Tilson motor? That's right, Tilson racing engine oil for sure. You know, because this is a Tilly motor. So. Uh, I did go ahead and put 16 ounces of oil in it. Um, I did spin the motor over before I did all the wiring and all that good stuff. I did spin the motor over with the plug out, got the engine primed up, because uh, he had like a, uh, I guess kind of like a shipping oil or uh, whatnot oil in it, because he drained the oil. So I guess he had everything lubed, the cylinder and all that stuff lubed. So engine's primed up, pretty pretty close. So. Probably the next thing we're gonna do before we get it on the ground, yes, I still have to put foot pegs on it, get the bars adjusted where I want it and all that good stuff up there. I uh, gotta get my other grip on it. I really wanna do that stuff where we're gonna get on the ground. So, trying to think of everything I can do while we got it on the table. So, I guess the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna head her over here, this direction, and we're gonna get this here header from Go Power Sports that they made for this jewel. Yeah. I already got my hardware. Do I have the hardware on it? Yes, we have the hardware on it. So we can get that mounted up and hopefully it's not gonna conflict with my breather too. So I'm gonna get this mounted up, check that over. I think we're gonna get it on the ground, throw some petrol in it. We're gonna light it up. We're getting close, y'all. All right, got her on the ground. I got my brake lever and all that stuff kind of situated and uh, all tightened up. Got the bars where I wanted them. And I uh, got the riser bolts all tightened up there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we're back here once I set on it. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to put the foot pegs. I probably just need to ride it. Um, I still got a lot of testing to do with it as far as gear ratio, all kind of stuff. So I think for now, I kind of like, it felt pretty good in the, the back hole there. Or the front of the back one. So we're going to put them right in this location right here, I think. I'll ride it. See how it does. But we're gonna get those mounted. What they do is they give you your hardware right here. So you'll have a lock washer, flat washer. It's a six millimeter. So I'm gonna get the pegs mounted on there. And you gotta make sure when you mount them, they do. Let's see if I can hold this up. They do fold up, so make sure you mount them in whatever position you uh, like to have those in. Man, these are nice. So I think that'll fit good there. Got my jug of fuel. Got my starter box charged up. Uh, matter of fact, let me show you this charger box. Like I said before, I might not be fast, but I'm sure it's gonna look cool though. I blinged out the starter box. Got this from old, you know, Carl Paul. He hooked me up this thing a good while back because I needed one to crank some old flatheads. So uh, I had to dig this out, obviously, for the engine I'm running. And uh, so I figured I'd be dazzled a little bit. Look at this cool rod right here I found. These were like red or something like that. And I'm like, this is like a polyurethane clear green, or it's 
translucent green or whatever. So I thought, yeah, that looks snazzy. Got it all polished up. So I thought that'd look cool. We ain't gonna be fast, but we're sure gonna look pretty though. All right, we're gonna get foot pegs on it. We're gonna gas it up. Y'all start crossing your fingers. And we'll see if we can make this thing scream. We'll be right back. All right, well, here we go. Got it fueled up. Yeah, fuel's on. Deal out, we're gonna double check the throttle, make sure it's closed all the way. Yep, that's out of the way. Let's get over here a little bit more. So. All right, let's see how she does. Ignition, we got that on. Probably gonna take a little priming to get fuel to the carbon tater. All right, I think everything's good. I think so. That's on, I do believe. All right, well, here we go. Here goes nothing. y'all folks but uh that thing sounds like a death trap a whole lot of fun death trap wow okay well y'all want to hear it rip and snort there ain't gonna be no testing or ride today i will do another video the wife said i couldn't go out and ride it by myself of course uh she needs to be out there to film anyway we found a stretch of road um that we don't think we'll have any problem with the law enforcement out there running because it's kind of out of the city limits so, I'm not sure if we're just going to call this an end to an ending today. Man, that thing sounds wicked. So, uh, we still got a lot more to do on it. I got to go out and take, make some test runs for this thing. But the GPS 660 is uh, right around the corner. You know what I mean? So, I got a lot of work still left to do. But at least we got it together. Now we can take it out and do the uh, testing and tuning and all that good stuff. And uh, so there will be a video for sure. Probably on the, uh, probably put a GoPro on the helmet and all that good stuff. Have the wife out there doing uh, the filming as well. So there you go. Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. Hope y'all enjoyed this part of the video. Hey, let me spin this thing around so I can see what's going on on the screen here. Hold on, bear with me. I don't know about buttons. There we go. So I guess what we're going to do is we might just call this an end to this here video. Can y'all see me? I'm in the light. Hold on. Shazam! Boy. So, like I was saying, if y'all enjoyed the video so far, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe that way you'll get notified whenever we post up the rest of the videos for this and other upcoming videos. Got some cool stuff lined out for y'all for uh, cheap entertainment. And uh, so, there you go. We'll see y'all in the next video. Y'all folks take care. And uh, y'all be safe in y'all's mini bikes and carts out there. All right.